Um, so let me introduce, uh, of course, our speaker today is uh, Dr. Dennis uh, Kuniv uh, from Monash, uh, the Ramakoti Centre in Melbourne. And uh, Dennis is a, an electron microscopy expert um, and uh, has heaps of experience with Dragonfly, which is a program that is open source for the most part. Well, at least it's free um, and uh, allows uh, people in the academic world, at least, uh, in the teaching space uh, to, uh, to use it for free, uh, which is an attractive um, aspect of the so software in its own right. Um, so I'm not going to prattle on um, any further. Let's uh, delve into the functionality uh, of Dragonfly. So welcome, Dennis. I'll leave it over to you. Thank you very much. So uh, Dragonfly is a very nice tool, and I have to disclose that I'm not I have no affiliation with object research, so I'm just uh, experienced and very grateful user of this software. So I'll try to show my experience and some practical examples uh, to show this oh, sorry, software. I think it can be useful for lots, lots of uh, possible applications in FIBCM, X-ray technique and everything. A couple of words about myself. Originally, I am from Russia, but uh, arrived to Australia almost six years ago, and almost Australian now, waiting uh, for citizenship, working at Monash, mm, doing lots of different projects, but now uh, focused on uh, image analysis. But before, I was doing everything from simple preparation to cryo. So lots, lots of experience in microscopy, and my PhD was about atomic force microscopy in biophysics. We designed a uh, way how to manipulate with single viral particles to attach single viral particle to AFM tip, but that was many years ago. So now mostly electron microscopy. Let's start. So what is Dragonfly? Uh, Dragonfly is a very um, big platform which contains uh, everything from uh, slice registration, filtration, advanced segmentation, everything. Uh, to work with volume images. So it can be X-ray, it can be confocal, anything. In our case, we mostly use it for FIBCM. Uh, the closest uh, competitor is Amira Aviso, so a Thermo Fisher. But very close. Who are working with uh, Amira? You can remember that uh, idea is to combine all tools for volume in one application. It's very similar. This round, which you can see, is just example, just for fun. It's uh, isolated from fully segmented uh, 3D FIBCM stack of muscle. So you can see myosin, actin, mitochondria, Z-disc, everything segmented and uh, isolated at sphere. An example of our practical use of Dragonfly. So this one from one published paper about uh, morphology of sperm. Here you can see, can... sorry, all good. Uh, here we can see uh, how we can present our FIBCM results using this software. This one from one uh, preprint about correlation, about uh, this FIBCM stack from HM20 resin. And uh, which instruments we use? At facility, uh, we have a dedicated workstation, a pretty big one. So it's uh, 512 gigabyte RAM and uh, very big GPU. At home, during COVID, I built one local workstation. Sorry? Did, did somebody uh, say something? All good? Great. So a full FIBCM stack can be processed uh, from scratch, from um, the astral data, uh, to final presentation, for, to illustrations, movies, uh, everything. So now let's jump to Dragonfly. I'll show you a few data sets and few uh, tasks today, which uh, commonly we're doing for FIBCM. First one will be a piece of uh, this data set from Sperm paper. So it will be almost raw data. 
just cropped to make it small enough uh, to process an acceptable time right now during uh, this workshop. And uh, of course, uh, histogram was equalized. That's it. So actually almost raw data. So let's jump there. Let's go to Dragonfly. So we have empty project in Dragonfly. Let's import some images, image files, workshop, mouse sperm from this sperm paper, but cropped data set to make it uh, not very big. So let's put manually uh, voxel size. It's 2 to 10 in nanometers, voxel size, finish. It's open, so I hope uh, when we will start some uh, processing, it all steps should take about three, five minutes. So I'll jump back to presentation and uh, we'll talk about something, uh, but uh, it should not be uh, very slow actually. So, okay, data set is uploaded. Yep. So, and you can see uh, it's normal way to present uh, 3D data in uh, volume applications. So this one x y this one z y and you can see it's not registered so slices has have a huge uh, shift and drift is on volume you can see not nice so let's register it so this one you can see lots lots of things which we can do with our our data set let's jump to slice registration yep and here we can peak algorithm to do it. You can see there are plenty of them from standard SSD to some advanced, I'd call it advanced uh, mutual info. A uh, mutual information, it's the best one. Empirically, we always use it. So let's jump here. Uh, typically we use these parameters. In Dragonfly, uh, mostly um, filters, uh, registration tools, etc. Uh, have uh, recommended parameters, so typically they are adequate. So we don't we can use uh, default one if we don't need something special. So let's use default one, two percent uh, max, and uh, zero one minimal step. So let's apply it for this uh, raw stack to get it aligned, registered. Apply. It will take about five minutes. So let's jump back to presentation. These five minutes, I will be talking about uh, these features. Then we'll come back and uh, we'll see what do we have actually. So share screen. This one. So can you all good? Yep. So uh, registration. Uh, we have different uh, algorithms here. Uh, and registration of slices is extremely important in FIBA here because uh, in optical uh, methods, mostly in X-ray, typically we have um, not so dramatic shift and drift in imaging. But in FIBOS here, because charging mostly, you know, electrons, ions, uh, they charge our sample, and uh, we have such problem. So sometimes you can see here, it's uh, Y, Z directions, here are uh, X, Z. Mm, it's obvious that um, stock was dramatically drifted during collection. And to do it for FIBOS the best one is this mutual info method. It provides a very, very uh, high quality of registration in acceptable time. So for typical PBCM data set about 40 gigabyte, it takes about one hour. Of course, it depends on computer, but uh, not uh, something super. It's just normal workstation. So and it's enough to properly register. And the next step typically is filtration. Dragonfly has uh, plenty of filters. I even don't know a few of them what they are, but all normal, typical sub to detect membranes, 
all the noising stuff, Gaussian, bilateral, everything. So really, uh, lots, lots of filters available. So we'll, after uh, stack registration, we'll apply 3D uh, Gaussian one uh, to denoise it, very simplest way to denoise stack, just uh, Gaussian filtration. Why we will apply it after our registration, not before? Obviously, because we will use 3D Gaussian filtration. And if our, our stack is not aligned, not registered, if we apply 3D first, we will have simply our smooth and uh, damaging of data because the slices will not match and uh, will the rest, uh, you know, damage our data. So we need to firstly align it and only then use our uh, 3D filtration. So let's jump back and see what uh, do we have in Dragon Fly now. Mm, yep, so two and a half minutes left. Oh, let's wait, it's easy to wait it because I, of course, I could do it uh, in advance, but uh, idea of workshop is to show everything process from scratch. So we open empty project and uh, I show how is it going and uh, how does it work actually. So I hope it will not be so annoying for you. Uh, just two minutes left. And then uh, we'll filter it, filter is much faster. And then I'll show you uh, annotation tools, how to make areas of interest and some operations with volume. For example, we'll isolate this head and extract it from volume and see how can we analyze the shape, geometry. An additional way we'll build a mesh. So mesh is a vector object, not raster. So it's actually a table of numbers, which can be analyzed uh, using MATLAB and every, even Excel. So any uh, software to analyze uh, numerical data. And that's very interesting because uh, morphometry and uh, deep analyzing of uh, especially biological uh, data in microscopy requires uh, some vector format some objects which can be um, analyzed, uh, you know, applying some mathematical approach, not just with <laughs> naked eyes. So it will be interesting. And moreover, then we'll convert this model to object format, which can be uh, 3D printed, even 3D printed or just opened in standard 3D viewer. I'll show it. Uh, it's very interesting because are pretty fast, it's possible to convert a raw FIBCM data set to something which can be simply 3D printed or numerically analyzed. So in acceptable time. So without manual segmentation and such stuff, which can take weeks uh, to one data set. So it's almost done. Let's wait. Yep, you can see. So shift was really huge and all this wait. So let's save uh, this data set, create new. We can always can choose uh, transform current one or create new one. So create new one, okay. Oops, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, created, well, it should be pretty fast, yep, oh, sorry, it's jumped again because it's screen, this one, yep, so now we can jump to registered one, you can see, now it's registered, it's all good. And now I can show you a simple first holding segmentation. So let's jump to segment, define range, show histogram. Jump here. Something like that. Okay. 
make a new ROI, region of interest. Yep, it's done. And now uh, let's switch this one off. So now we have this region of interest and we have morphological operations. So we can smooth it. Uh, we can feel this uh, empty dots, everything. So normal you know, morphological operation uh, with a uh, region of interest. But we don't need it now because we don't need uh, super quality, but just uh, demonstrating how does it work. So now we can simply export uh, this marked data because you know, uh, when you have mask, it's just binary file. So zero or one. And this mask can be applied for volume to extract real volume data, which uh, contains a level of uh, grayscale, for example, in uh, FBCM. So let's do it. Export. Yep. I'll close this stuff and open this one. Yep. So we can see exported data. But very noisy, isn't? So we can denoise it. We can uh, change uh, parameters. But thresholding idea is very simple, not so interesting. What if we want to isolate single cell, for example? We have very good tool um, interpolation. When we can, it's very useful when we prepare uh, data sets for training, especially for 3D net training. So let's do it. Let's create a new region of interest. So register it. So okay. And we have some marking tools here. Full, so normal brush. We can do it. And we have, uh, let's jump in about 50 slices to make interpolation. So you can see number uh, fifth. So local ATSU. Local ATSU is nice tool because you know ATSU, it's divide 50 50 or intensity in area. And uh, lower is lower 50 and upper is uh, upper 50. So you can see it's, it's very useful when we mark in membranes uh, to avoid. Lots of manual work. So you can see it's local also. But in this case, uh, we don't need this. We need full uh, marking. So I jumped to a uh, full brush. Yep. Uh, move to what, 50 slices forward. This one. And I obviously forgot to filter it. So when I'll do it, we jump to filtration. But don't worry, that's completely fine because ROI will be the same. We will apply it just for filtered stack. It's not a problem. I'm just demonstrating how our interpolation tool works. So I simply forgot about filtration. That's why we had lots of noise in our threshold implementation. Sometimes it happens. Last two slices. That's it. Okay. 
Yep. Let's press our interpolate. Interpolate on that axis. Apply. It should not take long about one minute because the uh, data set is pretty small, actually. Yep, and you can see now we have interpolation. Not ideal in this case because I used every uh, 50th slide, but actually pretty well. So we have this stuff isolated. And now let's jump uh, to filtration tool, workflow image filtering. Yep. And you can see lots, lots, lots of different filters, really plenty of them. So can you see a uh, filtration tool? Because it's give another uh, window. Uh, okay. So let's apply. You can see it. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's apply. Uh, which one? Use Gaussian 3D. Let's select uh, this one. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Have to start this one. Dennis, I might just uh, quickly ask you a couple of questions that are coming through on the chat, if that's okay. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so one from uh, Annalise is, uh, does it not interpolate automatically when you use the multi-slice selection? To that's different, it was uh, that question. So it, it's interpolation. Yes, yes, that's a good question. Of course, when we use a uh, volume brush, it's automatically doing it. But the problem is, uh, volume brush is the cube or sphere, and uh, we will have uh, some problems on border of our object. So it's all when it has complex uh, shape, it's always easier uh, to manually mark uh, some slices with step about thirty or fifty, and then press uh, interpolate. It's a little bit just more precise, but of course we can use just volume brush. It's completely fine. Why not? Yep, you can see uh, Gaussian filtration 3D and uh, apply for full stack. It will take about one minute. It's pretty fast actually. And also from. Um, it does the brush size change automatically, or are you changing that with each layer? I'm assuming you've got control over the brush size. Our brush size we change manually, so automatic. It, it's actually I don't think that it makes sense to change it automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, but if somebody prefer, I think um, theoretically it can be done via some plugins. But I've never tried it, so um, actually no idea. But in all my work, uh, just manual adjustment of brush size is uh, completely fine. So uh, no, it's, now it will be filtered. I'll show you just very, very fast uh, isolation of volume, then make mesh, and then you'll jump deep learning. Sorry, I'm slightly slower than I'm supposed to be. I was thinking uh, we will be able to start deep learning in first uh, 30 minutes. But I think it's interesting to demonstrate uh, in general this tool and our workflow for volume. So it's faster, faster, faster. <laughs> And so I assume that um, Dragonfly has a lot of other sort of pre-processing steps available in the software, such as openings, closings, top hats. Yes, yes, it has lots, lots, lots of pre-processing stuff. Yep. So it's 
already now. Let's see filtered one and let's uh, isolate this one so we can use our export tool. Yep. So let's change Gauss one export. Ready. So we have this uh, head. Of course, all uh, 3D uh, standard uh, properties available. So high quality, filtration, spectacular, and sharp. So all this stuff is available. And in the format of data presentation, we can always choose our orthographic projection and show scale bar. So in this case, it's one micron, so it's pretty small object actually. Yeah, you can see. And one uh, funny tool, a real funny option, I really like it. So we can use area of interest uh, to overwrite something in our data set. So let's do it. Overwrite zero. Okay. And now let's open our data set. Yep, and we can see the hole there. So we actually extracted this volume. And a um, couple words about um, format of data presentation, Dragonfly. So it has, you can see your pitch role terms, and uh, to see volume, we can use three planes which can be always uh tilted rotated so we can see really full volume in this way so it's pretty useful sometimes when we're trying to understand some uh 3d features uh, let's see uh what if we have this uh binary mask and it can be converted into mesh so 3d modeling generate contour mesh i'll use uh, four simply to make it smaller and faster but of course it can be done uh, more precise export to mesh closed yep open mesh and you can see now we have a mesh so it's vector object it's just a control graph. So it's a table of uh, values. And this stuff can be exported in STL format. So that's really interesting. And let's do it. Export, mesh to file. And you can see standard STL uh, format. So let's save it in our folder. Yep, it's saved. And now I'll open it with CAD software. So I'll open it using Inventor. Where is it? Yep. File open. Workshop. STL files. Control mesh. Yep. And now I'll export it. Unfortunately, Dragonfly cannot export it in object format. So we need to use some extra software. So I'll save it at obj. Yep. Save. And now we can open it with standard Windows uh, 3D Viewer. So just embedded software, which you can find at any Windows computer. So I'll open it. And now I'll share my screen. Share screen. Where is it? Yep. So it now we open it in standard Windows viewer. And I'll send this file. I, I don't know. It's possible to send file in chat. If possible, I try to edit, and everyone can try to do it at uh, his normal computer. Chat. Uh, mm, I think we cannot add the file. Can we? Uh, okay, okay. Don't worry. I'll send it after. And you can play with it. So that's fine. And uh, let's go back 
to dragonfly yes and now uh, i hope first uh, perception of uh, 3d stuff and dragonfly is done and let's jump to most interesting stuff to deploying which is really interesting because this one was just actually um, introduction so new let's start new session clear this one yep let's open in uh, oh sorry it stopped sharing yep now it should be fine uh let's open another data set uh this data set was slightly pre-processed to save time so it was just a uh, registered and cropped it's muscle it's a very tiny small uh, piece of muscle with high resolution uh, fibo uh, yep. uh, okay so we have this data set and uh, you can see uh, myosin fibers and actin fibers and now in here are tubules in a uh, sarcoplasm reticulum and now we want to segment it now it will be very fast uh, because we have not so uh, much time but I'll try to make model and train it in all in the rest 30 minutes so uh, let's make first mask for training new mask training okay let's put it to cover all features for example this one decrease intensity to see it uh no we need slightly bigger to cover myosin too yes because this one myosin myosin and let's make another area of interest um, let's call myosin yep let's use brush i'll be very fast so i'll use uh it's not it's do, we'll do it pretty fast actually all right see this one so mark this one and this one acting let's make new one acting acting yep. let's mark this one okay And here you can see I don't care about a uh, border of areas because we can use a binary operation to destruct to re remove one from uh, another one. Yep, this one. So now we can put up can yep, select them, put destination acting and A minus B. You can see border are clean now. And let's put cube. So new cubes. Oops. Dennis, can you uh, lock uh, one of your labels so that it can't be changed, or is it uh, only this add subtract function? Or uh, if yes, you can. There are binary functions, so we can keep uh, one which not in, uh, intersected, or can remove intersected one or can change order etc so normal normal logical operations uh, for binary uh masks uh sorry i don't, don't answer to chat now i will answer your questions but i'm trying to do uh this marking fast to illustrate how does it work so sorry if i don't answer your questions it means just we're slightly busy now so but definitely everything will be answered so now you can see we use local at brush to make uh, marks on these uh, cubes. Then you'll have time a few minutes when model will be trained, and I'll answer all your questions. So please don't worry about it. Yep, we marked uh, cubes, and we can use a uh, smoothing tool to make them not so ugly. Let's put kernel eleven perhaps. Uh, this one we don't need three D, so smooth. And 
take a look to this uh, cube's area of interest. Yep, you can see much smoother. And now jump uh, as far as possible to make uh, data for validation. So when we will be training our model, we will need some data to validate it. Oh, I think uh, this should be fine. So let's make another mask validation. Mask for validation. Okay. So let's put it here. For example, oh, decrease intensity, put miles in. Uh, we don't need a two here, we need two. So, ideally, I was going to show after segmentation, after semantic segmentation, denoising for miles in fibers, but I'm afraid we won't have enough time. So, this one is margin and jump to acting. And pull acting. Let's do the same. So A minus B, keep it in acting. Yep, can see it's clear. And now just add the cubes local. So it has adoptive Gaussians, you can see, but local at so sometimes even better. So because it's more sharp. This one. This one smooth. Yep. So now uh, we have to make dense multi roy. Multi roy means uh, many. Uh, areas of interest in one object. Dense means that we have complement. So we have uh, background which cover a uh, full surface. So let's select them cubes, acting margin, create dense multi roy. Yep. And now we're ready to start deploying. So let's jump artificial intelligence tool. It has very good deploying tool, deep learning. And let Let's do new, let's make new model. So empirically, unit plus plus is the best one for such kind of segmentation. I like it so much, actually. It's really nice. And we have uh, four classes here. So acting myers in cubes and complement. So let's put four classes. Um, recommended architecture is fine. So five levels, uh, 32 filtration. Uh, generate mod or let's name somehow workshop one zero okay zero because we have workshop zero generate yep close go to training so in training we can Put our data set, then multi roy as output and mask. Always remember about mask. So, training mask, augmentation. Typically, we use eight or 10, but now we need to be fast. So, I'll put just four. Brightness, uh, Gaussian noise, uh, nice stuff because it's, in, it's increased generalization slightly. Elastic transformation, very slow. Nice tool, but very slow because using CPU, we will not use it now. And jitter, uh, it's uh, 
very nice stuff you know when we randomly pick pixels from vicinity of object but we don't use we won't use it now to make uh, things faster actually and this one very important validation uh, sometimes we can use uh, just part of a training data set when our data are pretty homogeneous but when they not homogeneous like in our case it's much much better to have different data sets for training and for validation because another way we can be locked in some area which contains not enough uh, voxels from one small class and we will have not good training so the same material but mask validation all done with this let's jump to training parameters 64 fine uh this one uh, typically batch size 64 empirically 100 okay we don't have time for more let's switch this one and let's start training train so let's see how it's going uh we use gpu titan rtx uh 24 gigabyte now uh, actually about configuration of computer empirically uh 24 gigabyte gpu and uh, 256 gigabyte ram completely enough completely fine so i've never seen data set uh which uh would require something higher we have 512 at the lab workstation and uh, 48 gpu 48 gigabyte a6000 but actually even this relatively old one titan rtx completely fine so because in fibre cm you know we always limited with our uh, amount of data which can be collected in a uh, reasonable time we cannot have a uh, terabyte of uh, fibre data for one stack so you can see our training is running relatively fast let's give it about 50 epochs Yeah, of course it's smooth uh label not data it doesn't transform data uh we smoothen our area of interest so when we use uh, local at so we always have uh some so like uh border and uh, smoothen uh modify only uh our binary mask not data we, uh, of course we not uh we don't modify uh, our data so you can see training is running pretty fast actually this one is good oh uh, validation is even lower than uh, loss function so it's cool let's see of course um when we do in real project not just illustration we need more training data we need to mark them more accurately etc etc so it can take a week to make proper uh data set manually but uh to illustrate capacity of software and general principles that's completely fine actually so very small very fast my idea was to do it you know on your eyes so not sh don't show something which you have done before but i'll show you something presentation after but uh, for workshop we're doing it you know right on the table so let's keep it half minute more to 50 epochs yep I think it's fine so stop don't waste time yep you can see graph which can be saved save model and now we'll apply it pop as make preview so I will decrease this one I'm going to random slice pick here and press preview mm, not so good something not, not nice actually let's see this one yep so it recognizes uh, borders but for some reason it recognizes uh, everything like uh, acting mm. what can we do actually we don't have time to change it but i can load model which i trained with the same data just to check uh, time 
So sorry for that, but uh, let's go to model overview. And uh, yep. This one. Sorry, perhaps not enough uh, mark, but I marked the same amount of data yesterday. So it happens, you know, when we're doing live, everything can happen. So let's apply this model, which were trained by me yesterday. So preview. Yep, much better. <laughs> so you can see we recognized acting, recognized margin. The same architecture, everything the same, perhaps more accurately marked data and uh, that's it actually so no differences and we can apply it for full stack this model apply all slices so for all slices it will take about uh, I think five minutes so we're still in time and uh, let's see estimation but it should be about five or six minutes it should not be more yep so it recognized tubes recognize uh, actin myosin so now let's jump back to presentation. Uh, yep. So then, yep, we have filters we just got. And now I'm glad to show you example of our current project with muscles. So we have different uh, biologically different samples, uh, two FIBCM data sets segment them fully with a uh, unit and cut off the same orientation and same volume are part of this data and you can see segmentation this mitochondria network now we'll isolate single layer of mitochondria because our research question is organization of this level mark connected elements here and can see architecture of single mitochondrial layer so it's practical example of uh, our work and uh, how we use uh, dragonfly in our routine practice actually so this one you can see the main idea is uh, to cut exactly the same comparable volumes and comparable orientation to make it possible to interpret uh, and find difference because when we have just randomly oriented or you know roughly similar oriented uh, FIBCM um, volume data, it's really very tricky uh, to decide what differences uh, to quantify it, etc. So this kind of workflow, how to make it uh, understandable uh, for biological interpretation. So let's jump back to Dragonfly. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Oh, six minutes. But we're still in time. It will be exactly in the end. So I think now we have six minutes uh, for uh, questions and answers. So I'll jump in back to presentation. Yep. Yep. So uh, while we're uh, waiting for that, uh, yeah, if anyone does want to um, voice um, a question, please unmute yourself and uh, feel free to ask a question. Don't hesitate. I try to answer anything. Okay, we've had a few uh, questions in the in the chat, um, but I think you've addressed most of those. Um, certainly, the functionality is um, is excellent. Um, I mean, you were comparing it to Aviso, um, and certainly, it seems like all the functionality of Aviso is sort of hidden, or not hidden, but um, is distributed throughout that software. Uh, it's just a matter of getting used to uh, the software uh, as it is for any any piece of software. So, um, it seems excellent. Great. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So, uh, object research, I'm really grateful to these guys because they provide a free academic license. So just uh, send them your 
University ID card and email and they sent a license for one year, actually um, asking nothing. Uh, and, but uh, it's really, really good so everyone can access to such software because, you know, with Amira Visa problem is very expensive licenses. So that's why Dragonfly is, you know, game changer here. So I really like it so much. But uh, in general, it's very, very uh, good if somebody will be available to buy normal license. Why? Because, like commercial one for HPS or for something. Because uh, if you will not buy, if nobody will pay for it, likely this company will not survive. So if somebody wants to buy it for HPC or something, <laughs> please do it. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, there was a question from Levi just asking what the dimension, the, the pixels of data set you're working on. I'm assuming that's the muscle the muscle data set. What was the pixel size? Uh, pixel size one nanometer XY and 10 nanometer uh, Z. It's a data set which we used uh, for illustration in Dragonfly. Data set which used in presentation is uh, three nanometer uh, XY and eight nanometer Z size. Actually, Dennis, the question I was asking actually was how many pixels were in your data set? Not how big the pixels were. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry, I'm we, we sorry, can sim one. simply measure it. Let's jump to there and let's see it. Uh, I, but I can estimate it will be, I simply don't, don't remember exact number, so it's easy to- uh, Roughly. Uh, roughly, it will be, let me see, uh, 300 to 300 to 300. So, it should be about um, 10, I think 10 million or something like that, or even bigger. Uh, we will see it. Uh, sorry for that, because it should be done soon. Yeah, two minutes. In two minutes, uh, I'll show results of segmentation and we'll see. Uh, I cannot click it now because it's uh, working, but I'll precisely say you with one voxel precision, how big is data set? <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, well, while you're waiting, my, my other comment with this, and I did ask about the CVL for this, is we often get people who this is useful for. Sorry, uh, we often have clients and students this is really useful for, but they don't necessarily have a massive computer to put it on, so it'd be really useful to get this on one of our high performance compute cloud offerings like, like the CVL. Um, because we are, we have lots of people who would use it now and again, but we don't have. I don't think I've got any one person who would want to pay for a big license. Yes, uh, but the academic <laughs> license is great. I, the, yes, I, I've I spoke with them before, and they were very helpful. Um, but it's, it's yes, if you're going to buy a, a five thousand, eight thousand dollar computer to go with each, it becomes difficult. Yes, yes. So, uh, you know, uh, we're trying to uh, solve this problem with a workstation at uh, our facility, which can be booked uh, using iLab. So theoretically, a uh, user, uh, any user can book it and use it for data processing. But there are two problems, actually. Uh, one problem, when we do big training for big models, it takes days, so it will be busy. You cannot uh, randomly book it uh, every day. And second one, if many people need it, of course, uh, it's not a good idea to buy, I don't know, 10 very expensive workstations. It can be actually more expensive than just by license. So for HPC, I mean, uh, actually, I don't know how, how much is it, but I don't think that it's uh, very expensive. Well, it's expensive, but uh, not uh, super expensive in comparison with equipment cost. So, okay, it's done. I'll measure voxel sizes and then show you results what we have. So voxel size. You can see here, uh, it's voxels, uh, three, 376 million, 920. So it's roughly uh, 377 million voxels, this data set. And you can see these dimensions. So one, 400 pixels, uh, 900 and 300 pixels. So not very small, not very large. Okay, let's see. Sig results of segmentation. Normally, uh, 
presented as a multi roy So we always can extract ROIs. Yep, we extracted them. So now we can see them individually. And now what I will do, I'll use them to, uh, we can smooth them and process uh, anyway, but uh, to make things faster, I'll use them just uh, to export data. I exported tubes now. So I'll show them in 3D. Yep. So we have tubes from a uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Of course, some noise, it can be uh, denoised with simple algorithms with uh, smoothing, etc. But we have uh, tubes. Let's put some colorizing here. Let's make them I don't know, fire. Oh, too, too bright. Yes, this one. Now we can export myosin. So let's do it. Export. Let's colorize it uh, I don't know, traditionally red. No, it's very close to this one. So then, yep. Okay, so you can see myosin structure, fibers. And let's show the last one, actin. So export. Let's make it, I don't know, cyan. cyan. And let's change color in myosin to make it more almost. Yep. So now we have volume segmented. So we have actin here. You can even distinguish actin fibers, which are really very, very small. So that's really tricky. We can a sarco we can see sarcoplasmic reticulum with or clearly is uh, tubes and we can see myosin fibers and uh, to make it more exciting we can uh, but don't have time unfortunately now but we could denoise it so it should be possible to remove some small you know, conventional operations remove uh, small spots etc so actually in half hour we had segmentation of this uh, muscle chunk. So, so I hope it's good enough illustration for capacity of method and uh, operation itself. So I think that's it because we're in time, it's 2 p.m. But I will be really glad to answer any of your questions. And please uh, don't hesitate to contact me via email or you can find me in ResearchGate. I'm typically answer pretty fast. So I will be really glad to uh, help if I can be helpful. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Dennis, for uh, giving us that flavor of Dragonfly. Um, these sort of demonstrations always seem to go as a bit of a whirlwind and, um, and it's hard to cover the, the, the full functionality, but you've certainly given us a good um, taste of, of what Dragonfly can do. So uh, it's very much appreciated. Thank you uh, very much for your time and uh, thank you everyone for joining us.